Batman has had one of the most renowned rogues galleries in comic books for decades. Even though the modern DC universe is built in recognizable villains like the Joker, Two-Face, and Bane, the list of antagonists in The Dark Knight is continually expanding. The Batman Who Laughs, one of the most significant recent additions to the Batman's rogues gallery, has transformed Batman's deepest anxieties into an existential danger to the DC multiverse. Hey guys, and welcome to an extremely intriguing video about the DC universe's newest and most deadly villain. Yes guys, as we know that Batman is most definitely the strongest superhero in the DCU, considering that he has more than enough backup plans to not only take down any villain known or unknown to him, but also the fact that he has ways of taking down any other hero should they turn evil at any point. So it does make a lot of sense that if Batman turned evil, things would go quite haywire quite fast. And that is exactly what is happening in the DC Universe right now. So let's get into it. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Exploring the Origins of Batman Who Laughs To give you guys a background for the Batman Who Laughs, we need to go back and look at the miniseries that has become more of a proper series right now, Batman Metal. In this series, we discover that before there was anything at all, before even the multiverse, there was the World Forge, full of black matter, precious metals, and the World Forger. This was a celestial entity that would use metals and minerals available around the cosmos to create entirely new universes. As he would forge new universes, the successful ones would be accepted into the orrery of worlds, while the ones that failed would be destroyed. However, a deity known as Barbados decided to take advantage of the situation by taking these broken worlds for himself. Instead of letting them get destroyed as failed worlds, he would let them grow and plunge into chaos and destruction. It was from several worlds like these that the darkest nights arose from. In one such world, where Bruce Wayne was already a bit of a loose cannon, the Joker kidnaps him and tortures him in the true Joker fashion. However, this is not enough for him and he decides that physical torture just isn't good enough to harm good old Bruce. So, the Joker goes around Gotham, finding couples with a child, and recreates the scene of killing Bruce's parents right in front of him over and over again. Not just that, the Joker also uses his toxin on the children whose parents he killed and turns them into tiny little Joker creatures. This is what triggers Batman and pushes him over the edge. He breaks free and ends up killing the Joker. However, the Joker would be the one with the last laugh, because with his dying breath, he infected Bruce with some sort of Joker venom. Him. This is very similar to what happens to Bruce in Batman Arkham Knight. Bruce slowly starts preparing for the inevitable, as he knows that he will turn to something evil. So he spends most of his time training the rest of the Bat family for when that time comes, so they could end him. However, he had apparently turned a while back, because in one of these training sessions, he straight up kills everyone with machine guns while sporting the all too familiar wide smile across his face. The only people who could tip the Justice League are now gone. It has been repeatedly demonstrated that the Justice League frequently just leaves Bruce to his affairs, often allowing him to work without control or checking in. This is because the Justice League has so many challenges on their plate, and each member continually faces their own opponents. This is a significant mistake that cannot be undone. Remember that the Justice League probably never batted an eye because they are aware that Bruce keeps watch over the Bat family, and that he slaughtered the whole Bat family one week prior. They were gone and nobody even noticed. This gives Batman a full week of the famed prep time, but more importantly, he now has access to the Justice League's watchtower from his Batcave, meaning he can view cameras, audio, records, files, and updates at any moment. Without leaving, he can literally keep an eye on everyone in the watchtower, and since he helped fund and construct it, you know he probably has specific override codes, covert ways to watch without being seen by the watchtower systems that he established with Wayne Enterprises' intelligence, and constant updates are absolutely necessary for Batman to even have a hair's chance in hell against everyone from the Justice League. But once again, what matters is that they did not search for him, did not suspect him, and gave him free access to all of Justice League without any restrictions. Batman already knew their weaknesses, but before he could submit them, under the influence of the Joker, he changed those knockouts into kill shots, because it is frequently simpler to murder someone than to capture them. In the issue that showed Laugh's origin, there's a panel where we see that the Justice League is all dead in the same room, and it looks like all of this just happened, which is the second important aspect of the panel. This suggests that the battle was one Decided, as practically every member of the Justice League is much more powerful than he is, Batman carefully selected the ideal moment to strike, and made sure his attack left nothing to chance and no one breathing. If he had left even one person alive, it would have been his undoing. Batman just had one chance, and if he made a mistake anywhere, it was likely too late. 
What was the Batman Who Laughs like? Before killing his universe's Joker, the Batman Who Laughs was a lot like the Batman from Earth Prime. However, in doing so, Batman was exposed to a nanotoxin, which gradually changed him. It changed the way he thought, and it corrupted his moral character, making him more like the Joker. Bruce was also able to hold on to his extremely perceptive and calculating intelligence, as well as the organized and logical components of his mind, despite these alterations. Thus, he evolved into a character with the martial prowess and tactical acumen of Batman, as well as the immorality, passion for chaos, and insanity of the Joker. The Batman who laughs appears to be obsessed with winning and thinks he can always defeat his enemies because he has let go of the self-imposed restrictions that prevented him from employing more brutal and murderous techniques in the past. The Batman who laughs has indeed been able to adapt to diverse situations and prevail over all manner of incredible odds without his code restricting him. Like taking over the world, no, he literally took over the entire multiverse and became an omnipotent, cosmically aware god of a being. Because Batman Who Laughs has already wrecked his own universe and has learned from many others, he can also be pretty condescending. He is also extremely sadistic, and this characteristic of him is displayed when he stops the Grim Knight from killing Jim Gordon so that he can suffer a much crueler destiny, and shows up before the Court of Owls with no other agenda than to just hear them all die screaming. Bruce is still one of the DC Universe's most terrible villains, although it is presumed that he did not choose to be a villain himself. By applying this reasoning, it would seem that the Batman Who Laughs may be more tragic than the Joker despite his greater evil. The Batman Who Laughs may choose to put the ideas of good and evil aside in order to act in a way that he believes is best, which in this case is winning, because he believes that it is the only important action if he were to adopt the Joker's perverted morality. Though it would be severely skewed, the Batman Who Laughs may still have some sense of good and evil, given that he was able to hold on to part of his former thinking in regards to his genius. This is not the case now that the Batman Who Laughs has attained cosmic awareness, as he is aware that what he did was wrong, yet still desires to recognize havoc and destruction, without any regret or sense of consequence. Due to this, you could say that he can't use his parents as an excuse anymore, and has become far worse even than the Joker. However, if we also put in the theory that Batman and the Joker are two sides of the same coin, things get a bit more interesting and also confusing. This Batman may be an iteration of what happens if the immorality of the Joker wins over by just a smidgen, or perhaps this is just how far he could actually go just to reach his goals, whatever they may be. Exploring some of his unique powers, all the Prime Earth Batman's preparation, discipline, and experience are there in the Batman Who Laughs. He also knows the advantages and disadvantages of many superheroes and supervillains in the DC Universe, having already killed all of them in his own universe. He can adjust to practically any circumstance, and has knowledge from many different worlds he has visited. The Batman Who Laughs is exceedingly dangerous due to all of these qualities, as well as the fact that people born in the Dark Multiverse have very high resistance to attack from people in the main multiverse. He does, however, have a few noticeable flaws. Both Nth Metal and Element X have the potential to severely harm him. The Batman Who Laughs is still Batman, despite how different he has grown, and he can be taken aback by circumstances for which Batman is unprepared. For example, when Batman and the Joker band together. This, coupled with his arrogance, makes it possible for him to be defeated by unexpected events. The miniseries The Batman Who Laughs reveals that Laughs possesses the capacity to discern people's wants which he may use to hunt out what he wants. However, in order to concentrate his senses and target the object he is looking for, he must wear a visor constructed of dark metal. The Batman Who Laughs has nearly omnipotent abilities that are at least on par with Manhattan's after absorbing the powers of an alternate universe Dr. Manhattan and resurfacing as the Darkest Knight, making him one of DC's most potent adversaries, since Manhattan was never actually really defeated, just convinced to change his plans. Is the Batman Who Laughs Blind? Why does he wear a spiked visor? The Batman Who Laughs wears a spiked visor over his eyes, and that has often gotten us thinking, how in the world does he see? Well, we find out in a specific issue, where there is an interaction between Batman and Alfred. Alfred is worried about Bruce's well-being, and takes off his visor. This reveals some damaged-looking red eyes. Bruce is immediately infuriated and asks for the visor back, so clearly he can see. But what is up with those eyes? In one particular frame in the comic, we see that this Bruce can see into the dark multiverse, meaning that whenever he looks at someone, he can see their dark sides, their fears, and their desires as well. The spiked visor he wears is made of dark metal, and this allows him to ignore the other visuals and focus on what he wants to. Otherwise, it is probably overwhelming even for Bruce. Is it possible to kill him? 
This one is a bit tricky, so since the Batman Who Laughs is a creature of the Dark Multiverse, he is susceptible to the Nth Metal. This means that technically, he can be killed in almost the same manner that Superman can be killed with Kryptonite, and this has been demonstrated before. However, the intriguing bit is that even though this particular Batman Who Laughs can die, it is possible that another will crop up in his place. Here we are mainly talking about the idea of a Batman who laughs. It is entirely possible that another evil Batman is born in a different dark universe, or honestly maybe even multiple of them. So this means that even though the one that we are familiar with and had taken over Gotham City entirely is probably never going to be the only one. Recently, we have seen that evil Batman even came up with Batarangs imbued with some sort of toxin that can turn other heroes and villains into Batman who laugh. Prime example of this is when Superwoman saves Superman from some such a Batarang and turned into a Batwoman who laughs herself. This is basically more evidence to support a theory that you don't even need to originate from the Dark Multiverse to be able to turn into one of these despicable and demonic Batmen. Literally anyone in the multiverse can become a Batman who laughs. You could almost call it a type of immortality. What happened to him after his death? The zombie form of Batman Who Laughs. The Batman Who Laughs joined forces with Perpetua, the evil architect of the cosmos, in a run-up to Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's Dark Knight's death metal after a particularly savage assault on the DC Universe. Wonder Woman struck him with the Chainsaw of Truth, a weapon constructed from the wreckage of her invisible plane, and her Lasso of Truth after Bruce used the architect's boundless power to alter the DC Universe in his twisted image. The Batman Who Laughs was killed in this attack, but his brain and spinal cord were still intact, allowing for a brain transplant into a new body. Unfortunately for DC's heroes, that corpse belonged to a brain-dead Bruce Wayne who had been endowed with Dr. Manhattan's reality-bending abilities from Watchmen. One of DC's newest and most potent powers, Perpetua, is a deity-like being that gave birth to the DC multiverse as we know it today. She has been virtually untouchable throughout the recent events because of her level of power until now. The Ancient was apparently murdered by the remains of the prison that once held her since Perpetua's struggle with the Darkest Night had ended in a major defeat. One of the Super Celestials birthed from the Source, Perpetua, was born at the beginning of creation. Perpetua originally intended to build the DC multiverse before returning her powers to the Source, but she veered off course and tried to make a multiverse that could sustain itself. Perpetua was finally betrayed after producing three sons, the Monitor, the Anti-Monitor, and the World Forger, to aid her. The three were successful in capturing Perpetua behind the Source wall by collaborating with the forces behind the source. Perpetua attempted to control beings out of fear that the multiverse would someday perish and take her with it. This started the chain of events that resulted in the Crisis on Infinite Earths, Infinite Crisis, and Final Crisis. Each of these contributed to the Source Wall's weakness, with DC, Metal, providing the ultimate boost. Perpetua was entirely restored by Lex Luthor, who also took on the role of her protector. She played a key role in the events building up to Death Metal, and spent the majority of the event fully unleashed and wreaking havoc on the multiverse. But the Batman who laughs, who took Luther's place at her side, had been plotting behind her back, becoming the Darkest Knight after inheriting the abilities of Dr. Manhattan. The Darkest Knight engaged Perpetua in battle, while all the pieces of reality were collapsing around them, revealing his full power after stealing the Crisis energy from three fractured realities. Both mighty entities continued their struggle against one another, despite being cut off from their primary power sources thanks to the schemes of the remaining heroes. In Death Metal number 6, their conflict takes a harsh final turn. As she becomes weaker and more worn out, Perpetua proposes a relationship with the Darkest Knight, claiming that she is the only thing preventing the beings who made her from entering the multiverse and destroying it. The Darkest Knight, however, is hoping for precisely such a result, either to put an end to everything or to make an attempt at destroying it. The Darkest Knight explains that he had one more plan for Perpetua when she is all but destroyed. The Darkest Knight assembles the fragments of the Source Wall that formerly confined her using his abilities. The Darkest Knight imprisons her inside the Wall's remains despite her protests. The Darkest Knight struck out, presumably killing her, one last insult still screaming in her ears. The Darkest Knight was refueled as a result, and he was able to finish creating the Dark Multiverse. When Batman Who Laughs killed the entire Justice League and slaughtered the Court of Owls, the bulk of Earth's mightiest heroes perished as a result of Batman's fast transformation from hero to ruthless supervillain. The Justice League, whom Laughs presumably perceived as his greatest threat, was among those that were killed. Batman broke into the Watchtower's weapons vault, took many of the most powerful weapons from the team's worst adversaries, and used them on his former colleagues. All except one team member, Superman, were slaughtered by Bruce. Batman revealed his plan to use the numerous weapons the League had 
amassed from their numerous adversaries, conquered the entire planet during the last confrontation with the Man of Steel. Laps quickly reached into his pocket and produced some black kryptonite before Superman could react. Superman and his son were consumed by a terrible rage that caused them to kill Lois Lane before succumbing to the effects of the cosmic rock and dying. It is said that this corrupt Batman has also taken care of Supergirl using the same method. Can the Batman who laughs reproduce? To be honest, we don't really know. If we look at the facts, we know that Bruce Wayne is capable of conceiving a child because Damien exists. However, we don't ever really hear about any biological child of the Joker. So while Bruce can probably still have a child, it is possible that the Joker toxin that changed him made him sterile as well. But then again, that's all up to speculation, as we do not really have any information in the comics to go on and dig deeper. It is simply never discussed. However, the thought of the Batman who laughs having a biological offspring can be very very scary. Interestingly enough, we actually do see a Joker-fied Damien after the Batman who laughs used the same Joker toxin on his own son and changed him. Conclusion. So there you have it guys, the Batman who laughs. If we're being honest, it's really no surprise that this is a real thing because Batman is, well, Batman. That is precisely what makes his very existence so crazy to begin with. The fact that all of the DC universe is still in a mess because of the acts of a Bruce Wayne from some other universe is just mind-blowing to say the least. Oh, and before I stop, we would like to recommend you guys to read The Dark Knight, Rise of the New God. Not to spoil anything, but there is a monologue in it that may be perceived as the writers speaking to us readers. That that is completely hypothetical, however, but it is a really interesting thought to say the least. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.